Hi there and welcome back. In the continuation of hematology presentation series, we are going to be focusing this video on anemia. Okay, that's one of the speciality of hematology that you will see in all literatures everywhere. So let's move on to the next slide and we will get going. So remember the Greek or the medical language or the medical jargon that we were referring to we say that amia would mean blood, hema, hemato, or amia would be blood from uh, Greek. Now, anything in front of that as a prefix, a or n would mean what? Absence of or lack of, right? So, technically, anemia means no blood, right? But that is not it is. Generally, it is construed as deficiency in blood of right blood cells, right? And it can have a different deficiencies of different uh, cells in the blood. But generally, when we say anemia, someone is low on iron, we talk about anemia is a reduced red blood cells in the blood. So it should have been termed as hypo anemia or something like that but that's not what the literature would ever you will see in any literature so anemia is actually the reduction in the total red cell in our blood but the overall concept there are two aspects here one is the red blood cell count and the hemoglobin you will frequently encounter in the medical records and you will see both. Pay attention and focus more on hemoglobin because hemoglobin is the protein attached to, bound to the red blood cells that carries the oxygen to every tissue we have in our body, right? And the carbon dioxide um, exchange takes place in the lungs. And another important aspect, if you recall in the prior video presentation, we were referring to that we don't want to pay attention to simply just one absolute number. If you have the luxury, you want to focus on the range of the hemoglobin and correlate that with the RBC. But RBC is not uh, the number of count that you are looking at you need to pay attention to the hemoglobin level because that bottom line is the ultimate oxygen carrying protein that reaches out to the every tissue in our body. Another way you can look at is the packed cell volume or the volume of red blood cells per volume of whole blood and it correlates with the hemoglobin. Okay, you can have various indices and we will later on get into that but special attention deserves by the hemoglobin let's move on so know the normal range here and depending upon the children the, the male or female you can have a different range and what is more important is you pay attention to what is the baseline and look for the trend because one absolute number may not help you need to look at the bigger picture why do you think that smokers tend to have somewhat higher because you're when you are smoking your body tells it signals hey i need more oxygen so i need more hemoglobin or i need more red blood cells that's how it goes so you will notice that and Pay attention to the baseline and the trend that will help you correlate all the details that you see in the medical records um, and put the appropriate pricing for the individual that you are underwriting. So let's move on to the next slide. So one may think that you know what, I as I read the medical records or even in the clinical practice that I can based on the signs and symptoms uh, I can figure out and I can diagnose the anemia well it's not that quite easy because someone who may be anemic 
they may have a non-specific signs and symptoms. Oh yes, I get some fatigue, I get some uh, uh, muscle cramps, I get tachy, uh, cardia and things like that. But none of these are specific. So it's not that easy to come up with the diagnosis of anemia. So let's move on and we'll see what else we can focus here. So as far as you as a life underwriter want to pay attention to some of the broader classification rather than looking at the laundry list of different types of anemia. So one way you can better grasp or understand is the morphologic way of looking at the anemia. It has to do with the main corpus pillar volume. You can have a small, you can have a normal, but there is a variation or the combo of small as well as big, the size of the cell, and that can lead to the normocytic anemia. And you have a bigger red cell that can lead to the main corpus pillar volume higher than normal and that would be labeled as macrocytic anemia. So let's move on to the next one and we can get into the details of uh, different aspects. So another way you can look at the anemia would be the pathological way. So the pathological way on surface sound easier to focus but still it's not that easy but broadly speaking you can have acute or chronic blood loss, right? And that could be labeled as anemia. Your body, the bone marrow, there is a malfunction or some abnormalities. It doesn't produce the number of red cells and the hemoglobin that leads to the decreased production, that leads to the anemia and or the bone marrow is producing enough amount of red blood cells and the hemoglobin gets circulated in the every tissue that we have in our body but it just quickly moves and it because of the increased turnover there is a increased rate of destruction that the bone marrow is unable to keep up with the demand and the supply is lower and as a result it leads to the anemia so that is one way to look at the anemia. Let's move on to the next slide. And as I was saying before that there are some indices. So as far as the red blood cell goes, you can have a mean corpuscular volume, uh, mean concentration, hemoglobin, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentrate, and red blood cell distribution bit. Okay. So there are different ways you can focus, uh, look at the cell size, look at uh, the, the main corpuscular volume and that's the average red blood cell size, okay? And uh, with the normocytic anemia, what you may end up having is both the micro as well as the macro sites or the cells in just uh, one uh, sample, but then you are looking at the Everest turns out to be normal, but that is still a normal anemia. So, uh, normocytic anemia, right? So, but when you have a normocytic anemia, what will happen? The red distribution cell width is then increased. And that's one of the indicators through which you can associate, and there are data to suggest that there are extra mortality associated with RDW. Of course, you can have uh, on the uh, microscope, you can look at to see what are the variations about how small the, the cell size is or how big the small size is and that way also you can figure out. But bottom line then it would be reflected, the RDW would then increase and you would see that um, there is a correlation with the extra mortality. Let's move on to the next slide, please. So, what is RDW? RDW gives the red blood cells distribution width. It is a measure of variation in the red blood cell size. Know the normal range, okay? Although RDW per se would not help in diagnosis, so to speak, 
but there are data that suggest that they are associated if they are associated with the anemia that brings extra mortality and even there is a higher risk with an elevated uh, MCV and of course more so with uh, cancer and cardiopulmonary disease. So let's move on to the next slide. So we talked about the small size mean corpuscular volume okay and that is something you would normally see in iron deficiency anemia, sideroblastic anemia, anemia of inflammation and you can have thalassemia okay so that is common when we look at the anemia that is called microcytic let's move on to the next slide so this is in life after writing throughout your career you will notice that the most frequently encountered anemia would be the iron deficiency anemia okay and that can happen because of the loss of iron and or inadequate iron intake or absorption okay um, it could be due to the GI blade trauma a uh, woman could have menstrual blades uh, pregnancy these are the common factors that can lead to the iron deficiency anemia one important aspect that you want to make a note of is the fact that this anemia is a finding not the diagnosis recall the first session of this presentation series right so this can lead to the iron deficiency anemia and these are the possible causes but iron deficiency anemia is not the diagnosis you can have a, a gastric bypass celiac disease you name it the inflammation of uh, uh, the stomach gastritis and in some developing countries the one of the common factor or the reason is diet deficiency in iron that can lead to iron deficiency anemia let's move on um, further so obviously the question comes that how do we diagnose the iron deficiency anemia you will see the signs and the trend in the medical records that we are reviewing you will notice low hemoglobin low uh, serum iron a uh, low fer ferritin uh, there would be increased transferring the protein that transports the iron is measured as total iron binding capacity right so these are the different ways you can measure but one quick way to test and or to come up with what the customer or the insurer has the iron deficiency anemia is the serum ferritin because that is the easiest test to diagnose that being low with iron deficiency anemia compared to other kind of anemia where it may be normal it may be even elevated okay so let's move on another important concept that you will notice in uh, microcytic anemia is the association with the hemoglobinopathies and I think this is this is the subject where I feel that I will have a separate presentation on that but I just wanted to take a moment to explain to you that the sickle cell anemia and you have to have the both not just the one and uh, they clog the capillaries because of the shape of the cell that leads to anemia but it's a it's it's a complex subject we will get into uh, all these details and we'll have a separate presentation just to focus on this so let's move on to the um, next slide and thalassemia is another important uh, subject that you want to understand and learn it uh, the severity can can vary but uh, you can have alpha you can have beta again that also there could be look for the complications and and see what categories it fits into uh, assess the severity based on the details you have in the medical records but again this is another important aspect of the uh, hematology that we will try to cover in a separate presentation so let's move on to the uh, next slide As we said there could be a bigger size that can be labeled as a macrocytic anemia 
and what are the frequent or the typical causes that you will see in the medical records. Uh, that can be the, as simple as B12 or folate deficiency, you may have a gastric disease, uh, celiac or Crohn's are also common. If you don't see this, then think about alcohol, you can have a liver disease and there could be some uh, bone marrow malfunction that could lead to the myelodysplastic syndromes and there could be some malignancy like multiple myeloma, uh, plastic anemia and you will have uh, someone with the HIV and the uh, treatment that the person is going through that can also lead to the macrocytic anemia. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. So how do you underwrite the macrocytic anemia? So look for the response to the therapy and bottom line as we said in the first video, rate for the cause. Okay, if there are no concerns, if treated well, you can depending upon your company specifics and the manual you can consider. But